All right, so in today's video, I'll be showing you this video where we take a line segment and we create a facade that is subdivided and it has a curve attractor where you can change the gradient of where the openings are, which also allows you to vary the minimum and maximum to be able to pick how the gradient behaves. So if you're new to Grasshopper or you want to learn a few more tricks, I'll be sharing all of the steps here within the video. I'll also be sharing the script. So thank you very much for being here. Hopefully you're excited to learn a few more things and let's jump right into it. All right, so the first thing we'll do is create a rectangle. Now we can do it parametrically, but what I'll do is I'll create it here within Rhino. So I'll go here to a rectangle, create one here, and then bring this into Grasshopper. So let's go to Grasshopper. Let's bring in a curve component. And let's go here to set one curve. All right, so the next thing we'll do is turn this into a NURBS curve. So what we'll do first is divide this curve using divide curve. And let's now use a large number, let's say something like 50. And now use these points to create a NURBS curve. which what it'll do is it will soften the entire curve, but it will turn it from four separate line segments into just one. So now notice that here at the end, it does not close it. So we need to go here to periodic set Boolean to true. Notice that now when we lower the number, it kind of has a larger radius here at the corner. So now we can hide the points and hide the original curve. Same with this one, we can just hide it. And now what we'll do is we'll move this up. So we'll, let's bring in a move component, move this curve. The motion is going to be in the Z direction. And now we'll use a slider to create the height. Let's make the max here of 200. Next, we're going to be creating a copy, but rather than creating a new slider, what we can do is copy this down and use the Z vector, but then go to a divide by two. So we'll bring in a division and we'll divide this Z vector in half. And so now we have three separate lines. Now what we'll do is create a loft between the bottom one and the top one. And this middle one is going to be the curve attractor. So it's going to be placed right in the middle um, now what we need to do is create the pattern. So when you're subdividing a surface, there are different ways you can divide it. The most practical way to do it without having to download any other uh, plugins, you can use Isotrim. But what I'll do is I'll use Lunchbox, which is a plugin that you can download for free. And under the panels here, you can see that we have different ways that we can subdivide it. I'm going to be using the diamond panels. Notice that it subdivides that loft into those panels, but now we need to create the U and V subdivisions. And 
and hide that surface. So now we have this subdivided skin. We can change the number of subdivisions. So the V count is going to be a horizontal subdivision. And then here the V, the U is going to be the vertical. So we'll keep this kind of small here. All right, so now that we have this subdivided with the diamond panels, we're going to have two different ones. The tri panels, which are going to be the ones at the edge. And then we have the diamond panels, which are the ones that are in the field here. So when you have lunchbox, you'll also see that under the lunchbox, um, under the lunchbox tab, you'll see a generate and you can generate a panel frame from these two. So I'm using this input into the panels and then holding down shift and plugging it into this one. Now the scale factor is going to be what allows for the pattern to get larger or smaller. Now you don't want to use one, you want to use something smaller. And so the smaller you get here, um, zero is going to be the smallest and then one is going to be completely open. So we'll keep it here around 0.6. And now what we want to do is, let's hide, I think this is good. Um, now what we want to do is use this curve here in the middle to change the scale factor of the opening and closing of the panels. So what we need to do is one thing, bring in the component called curve closest points we'll be using this line segment into the curve input the points are going to be the midpoints of these panels so i'll double click here into the panel frame so i can create this relay with both of these plugged in now I'll bring in an area component, which is going to give me the midpoint of all those panels and use the centroid, which is the center point as the point that it calculates the curve attractor. Now what the curve attractor is, is nothing more than this line segment calculating how far it is from all of these points and therefore giving you the ability to change the size in a gradient relative to where this line is. So with this distance, notice that we have a lot of different numbers. We have 226 different values for the distance. Now we can go here and plug it into the scale factor. But remember that the scale factor is a number between zero and one. So what we need to do is re map these numbers to be between zero and one. So we'll plug the distance into the value input for remap numbers. Then we'll go here to bounds, which is going to give us the largest and smallest number. Smallest number zero, the largest number is 29. That goes into the source and the target, we need to construct domain to be able to tell it what the biggest and smallest numbers are, which we already kind of have here. It's going to be, we'll copy that slider that we use for the scale factor so we know that that works. And we just need to plug in a start and end number. And now it's going to remap all of these numbers into a number between 0.16 and 0.8. So notice now here that the first number is 0 0.70 and before it was 24.8. So now let's plug in these numbers into the scale factor. Notice that the domain start is going to be the smallest number in the middle or where the curve is, but we could always change this.
So what this will do is allow you to control the smallest number and the largest number. Now, the only reason why this stays the way that it is is because we have moved this line segment halfway from the top and bottom. Now in a bit, we're going to change that location, but for now it serves the purpose of um, becoming the line that allows for the pattern to create the gradient. So now here, we're going to hide the points and the curve closest point. And now let's go here to a custom preview so we can see what this looks like. I'll use a color swatch to color it here. And now we have the frame, which is the outside part. Let's change this to a gray color. And then the panels, we can change that to be more of a blue. And then change the transparency here. So it's a lot easier to see now how it all changes. And the reason why I wanted to show this tutorial is because this is one of the greatest functions that Grasshopper serves as an architecture designer, is that you can calculate these gradients a lot easier doing it this way because all of the computational, um, all of the design decisions of changing the sizes are being done computationally by being able to pick where this line segment is. So now what we'll do is we'll delete this. Notice that it moves it down. We're going to now move and copy this Z vector and then move it down and up. So you can see that as long as you know where to place your curve attractor, that can change your entire facade or skin design just by moving that line segment. Where if you, let's say you were coming up with a design, if you were to do this manually, this would take you a long time to move this and calculate how far they are. Um, so just wanted to share with you guys some of these tricks that are pretty useful. Now we're not just stuck with this pattern. What's cool is that let's try to do this with a different pattern using the same stuff that we already have set up here. So for the most part, what you want to keep track of is that whatever comes out of the subdivision, that you only have one output and one input, the surface input, and then the pattern output here. So let's now go to a hexagon, we'll use the same divisions, 10 in the U, 40 in the V. We'll use this loft option as the surface. And now we can override. So I'll actually double click here again, because these are two that go into one, and this one will be one that goes into the other one. Now, the catch is that you can't use the panel frame with this pattern. So let's try a different one. Just showing you there's some limitations, especially when you turn a corner, you need to have planar surfaces for it to work. So let's go to something like this triangulated, which we know that triangles create flat planes. So now let's go to this panels plug that into the input and notice that now we have a completely different pattern. Let's change this here as well. And we still have all of the capabilities. So what using Grasshopper can do for you is allow you to try different patterns and be able to see the gradients fairly quickly. And lastly, if we type in show, everything was created from this line segment. So notice that we can now change that and update it. And it can be applied to other designs, which if you look at it realistically, doing this 
not parametrically would take even longer because then you have to change the form and change all the subdivisions. And so with this, we can just go to whatever shape, then close it, and then go here to set one curve. Or even scale it down like this. So with that being said, um, I'm going to now clean this up and share it with you guys. For those of you who are interested in seeing how this is plugged in, I'll have this available on my website, capetidavid.com. So hopefully you learned a few more tricks and um, yeah, let's get into cleaning this up. So let's go to divisions. curve division, then here we'll go to group, and then I'll label the group. So this will be set one curve. Then we'll go to this one 62, which is going to be the height. I like to group it so you can see, you know, the highlighted ones are the ones that change. This is going to be curve attract location this is going to be u it's going to be v and obviously the output can change so we can have it here so you can override this this is going to be min and then max And I do like to right click here on the input and go to wire display get in for the input for these because these are kind of independent. All right, that concludes the tutorial. Thank you very much for being here and I hope to see you in the next one.